Okay, so hello, welcome back to Give Money Coins and Banknotes. My name is Glenn, and in today's video, we are talking about Chinese coins. So this is a topic that I have a yeah, um sorry, it's nearly my bedtime. Got 15 minutes to actually go to bed. So Chinese coins have been around for about as long as Lydian coins, although the actual coins themselves probably start, well, they say around about 600, which would be these spade coins. But before that, the Chinese actually issued Howry coins. So this is an image from Wikipedia, and it has the earliest coins that were issued in China, which we have the Cowrie shells, which were the earliest. They were issued in the Western shell period from about 1100 probably to 700 i would say it's more likely in the later part of the period in the earlier part they probably would have used that as stuff as a as a barter system or probably just use ingots as a an exchange system during the earlier civilization so the first cowrie shell we have is an actual cowrie shell and these were supposed to being brought from the tropical areas so uh, they were not really endemic to the coastlines of China you needed tropical waters so a lot of them actually come from the Maldives and uh, around India so they would have been exchanged probably going up through Tibet or Sichuan uh, now as um, Sailing technology was not as advanced. Uh, they probably would have had trouble exporting it through the coastline, but it would have been doable. But overland would have been a lot more practical in uh, this time period. So down below, we have a carved one. It looks like it's carved in bone, but if you can go to... Uh, Zeno, which has the most extensive catalogue of all these coins. So as you can see, these are actual carry shells and they put a lot of holes in them so they can actually string these up. Now, what these purchase, uh, I'm not too sure. Uh, we have, the, there is a book. So we... The only extensive book I have are these ones by uh, Arthur, uh, Arthur Brad and Cole. So he has an extensive, well, probably this is not that extensive, it's pretty, I don't think there's that much information that we can glean. Uh, from these books in the historical records. A lot of this is we're coming from archaeological and uh, just like how we research languages, like how we found out what Sumerian is like, we had to actually go through Akkadian and then we had to go through initially through Persian and that's how we also found out uh, and deciphered Elamite. But because we don't have that system with the uh, the Preta language of Minoans, uh, so we do have this script, but we are unable to translate it because there is no bilingual text. So basically, they would have, I would say, just an educated guess. By trial and error, uh, with um, seeing what the scripts are on the coins, because uh, basically... They're nothing like the scripts that we have now. So, in his text, we have a lot of Chinese characters. He has the uh, pronunciation in Mandarin. Uh, but these would have been in Old Chinese. So, Old Chinese is no longer, well, as you can gather, like Latin is not spoken. And the current Chinese languages, which are derived, you know, like Cantonese, uh, Sichuanese, Mandarin, all the various aspects of Mandarin. Some people call them dialects. I call them, but they're probably, Mandarin should probably be divided into different languages. Uh, just like Hindi, it's just 
impractical that it's just one pretty much language it's probably like a dialect continuum like uh how dutch is going grading down into the bavarian uh languages so that's basically uh my little tangent okay so i've taken the wrong one off okay i want this one okay so Zenu has a lot of all these coins now when you click on an image a lot of these have been purchased but we have no information uh so basically you're relying on the the, the seller or the archaeological context now you can get modern ones that you can counterfeit you just go to the ocean purchase a few shells and just say yeah these are ancient chinese but there is a thing called <clears throat> the carbon half-life which is about, about 5700 years so you can use radioactive decay of carbon so carbon 13 to carbon 12 yeah i'll say it is carbon 13 that would have one extra pro no, neutron that gets ejected into carbon 12 so basically that's how you would actually date these things although even in that context uh, it's debatable where you got the actual shell from okay so also on uh, in zeno they have bone jade stone mother of pearl clay imitations bronze cowrie and silver so in this video i think we just so we've seen the actual shell there's only 18 uh, and there's also comments that you can read about sh this information okay were those specimens that didn't have back cut out strings or you also used as coins the unshelled fat cows may have been shaved. Ones apparently were stored in bronze carry containers that were very art to artfully designed. The New York Art Museum had one on display a couple of years ago. I remember the lid had dragons and pamper on it. The cowries were much more valued than that they are now. Yeah. Whether these were like banks or saving money in or were stand values of carries in one container i don't know so essentially he's saying that because these were hard to get you know you couldn't just go down to the beach and pick them up there were no cars back then it would have taken you weeks or even months depending on where you are to actually travel to the destination where these were i'd say if they had to go to india probably could be at least up to a year to travel this there so they would have had to be traded and these were the monopoly apparently they were monopolized by the governments so you, i would say in the most extreme context context they were illegal to transport you know it would have constituted smuggling which uh, would either probably be a hefty fine or jail time or in the extreme case execution which uh yeah no, chinese love doing okay so bone imitation so these bones imitations would have been you could probably check what type of bone it is if it has some type of dna that you can extract that's usually for marrow but base looking on these uh, there is no marrow so they actually cut down the center to make like where the actual uh foot of the snail would have come out and then they had tops so these are holes that probably use for threading so so you can actually string these coins together so and you can see that there's quite a lot of different variations so you could have just used any bone but 
then you would have had to take time and ponds the most valuable thing you can actually have okay so what i want i'm not really the jade i'm not really that interested in jade but you can see that this is a um, pretty much a type of uh if you don't know what jade is we can look it up now the jade is a okay use for jewelry it's a monocryptic it's a mineral and it doesn't give the chemical formula okay so it's a silicate mineral uh two different minerals so nephrite so a silica of magnesium and jadeite silica of sodium and aluminium and a pyroxene group yeah so pretty much these are pyroxenes after balls which indicates that they're an igneous rock so they're formed by um, magma I would say most likely that is the same that is what they are so amphibole minerals you know these you find in the basalts rhyolites uh, granites granodiorites diorites stuff like that and if the actual plutonic rock uh, the intrusive igneous rock crystallizes slowly so it cools down a lot slower then the crystals can get larger and this just gives you a structure so generally you don't find these in sedimentary rocks so it's like sandstones siltstones uh limes and all that and here we have a an actual graph so this is the actual quantity of the actual mineral and this is silica by weight so you got the i'll get enough a tangent here so anyway uh, so these are mafic these are felsic rock it means more silica less silica so anyway that's that's what it is so it's jadeite is pretty much it's just pretty much just pyroxenes okay so uh, where were we okay so as you can see and because these have small interlocking crystals they would more than likely uh, they would be quite stable for a long period of time uh, so this one it actually looks like this one looks like a it has a lot of impurities in it it's a bit hard to tell from the actual photo okay so that is pretty much jade and they've just made the same way as the bone so pretty much that's it uh now these are supposed to have been used all over the cell so if you don't know what the shell time period is so this is in about a thousand so shell dynasty and they were slowly expanding and as you can see Shanghai's over here, so they didn't exist over here. Uh, this place roughly around where Beijing is. So here we have the Korean Peninsula. Here we have Mongolia. Vietnam's down here. And as you can see, Hong Kong's over here, which they didn't uh, inhabit. So these were all different ethnic groups. And if you go down to the Wikipedia, it gives you the different localities of the so these are uh, dukes so this is more like a, a feudal type system probably not like in the western sense but the capital was at Zhao so here holding if you go up to the article gives you the capital Cheng Zhao uh, but initially it was Ping, Ping Ho. So obviously it's had a lot of different capitals and they're roughly around this area. 
Obviously, this doesn't actually show those cities that are mentioned above, which is a bit sad. Okay, so then we've got a later period, and here we have all different dynasties. So we're going to check out all the different coinages from these different periods and different kingdoms, dukedoms. So pretty much by the 700s, a lot of these are pretty independent, and the Shao dynasty was just a figurehead. Okay, so we have the yeah, jade. So you need archaeological context of uh, where these are found to actually know the actual context. So we have different types of jade, which a lot of them are poor and a lot of them good. So uh, it's probably also a lot of imitation jade coins as well. Okay, so then we've got stone. And this is the one I like. Stone imitation. So this doesn't give any context of the stone. And that might be quartzite. Although it's a bit hard. Could be fluorite. Uh, go back. Okay, so the, a lot of them are light coloured. Could be limestone. But uh, you need to do a chemical analysis to actually know what they are. Okay, this one says. Um, stone like material associated with the Xia Dian Dian culture. Okay, so could easily be siltstone, but siltstone is actually quite soft. So I would say this is probably, uh, probably a metamorphic rock. What type of metamorphic rock? I don't know. It could. Oh, the actual type of stone, this is very interesting. And as you can see, they're actually, these are a lot harder. So the images are actually, uh, they look like they took a lot more work to actually, than the bone, to actually design these type of coins. Okay, what does that say? A white stone. So what is a white stone that occurs in China? That I don't know and I need to research. And here we have one, it actually looks like a cowrie. So that is, that would have taken a hell of a lot of work. So this would have been an expensive item to actually produce. Are there any other ones? Okay. Labelled ivory, stone cowry, labelled ivory. Okay, yeah. Okay, so there is no context about what type of stone. So this one looks like it might be an igneous rock. I can see it has a, a lot of crystals. Probably a diorite. But I could be wrong. Could be the image. Could be just a, another sandstone. It's actually greyish type sandstone. So I'm looking for something with a, an Im, you know, just an image of what type of rock it is. Okay, this might be flora. This could be like milky quartz. But let's see. Yeah. Okay, so none of them have details of actually what type of stone is. So that one actually need to look up which uh, string carved in fine grain sandstone. Okay, so here we have a fine grain sandstone apparently. I can see it looks pretty sandy to me. Has differential colouring, which is pretty normal for sandstone. Probably iron oxide to have been. Pretty much uh, part of the, not the deposition, the, uh, uh, the erosional process. Okay, how about this coin? Yes, and it, it should be classified as a coin, even though it's a trade token. Uh, a coin doesn't need to have an inscription of the denomination or the country of issue. Uh, 
as we've seen Roman coins and all Chinese coins that new inscription of the actual dynasty they have the uh, portrait or just lettering and Yeah, it's stone cowrie. So this one could be looks like it's a metamorphic rock as well. And just based on the actual flow lines of these, about what type of metamorphic rock, I'm not too sure. So you need the context for these. Okay, so that is the stones. Quite a lot of stones, micro pearl. So these are just shells that are actually being carved. Which, as you can see, it's these, they're all pretty much flat, which is pretty much what a shell. So these are probably bivalves or whatever. So if you're not too familiar with Papa of Pill, I think it might be an oyster. Okay. You also know Mother Pill. Composite some mollusks, so it's a nautilus. They're related to octopus and ammonites. And here we have another shell. So we have an electron microscopy image of fractured surface of a shell. So as you can see, it's been layered. Probably growth lines, I would say, but it's no way. So fossil nautiloid. Looks like they actually. Oh yeah, has the original shell from the middle of Pennsylvania, the carbon only first, so pretty much about probably about three hundred million years ago, three fifty, which is very interesting. Oh that I need to know and find out the context of that. Okay, yeah, so they're pretty much just shell, that's all these are. And as you can see, uh these pretty much don't survive that well because they're pretty much calcium carbonate or aragonite. Uh, so they are easily to for the actual acids in the environment to destroy and that's what we've probably seen here. And these type of contexts, they would have had to be protected somehow. So we have this Mother of Pearl, got clay imitations. So whether these clay ones are actually fired, I'm not too sure. But these seem to have inscriptions. So these are the first ones to have inscriptions on them. And I'm not too sure what the inscriptions are. Now the actual coal catalog doesn't say anything about these inscriptions. Uh, obviously these are probably found after he actually produced this book, but the actual inscription, uh, cross line back characters, Yin or Tian, below, not sure. Okay, so they're not too sure what this character is. Looks like we've got one on the other side as well. So that is. Very interesting. I've never actually seen that myself. So initially the clay ones just had the underside of the cowrie and on the top, which is flat. Actually, these look like a India Caro type flora. If we have no, not that. Coyota. So yeah, I think they're called Vendia, which, yeah, okay, so, okay, I'll we'll look at this one. So what we're looking at is number eight, Perididium, okay, Kimberellia, not that one. Well, maybe it looks like nine, which is Dickinsonia. Ooh, very interesting. So, this is also another thing I really like is the Eddie Akara and Biota. And it is, hey, just very fascinating. I'll go and look at that later.
Anyway, we're still talking about the actual shells. Okay, this is okay, part of the first place exhibit in 1988 ANA Convention of William Spangler, item 17, one of three pieces. So that's what we have here. We had one of three pieces. And as you can see, there's all different types of varieties. So the archaeological context is different. So they're the three pieces. Actually, it's four. So probably one was displayed. But as you can see, this site looks like it's probably from the same mold. So I see that the inscription's pretty much the same. Okay, so the rest don't seem to have inscriptions. Any written? No. So that's the first case of writing, which became more prominent later on in Chinese coins. Uh, and we have uh, bronze imitations and silver. So the bronze ones, these look a bit more crude because uh, the amount of work that needed. And they pretty much they look uh, pretty flat. So they're probably an earlier technique to actually cast Chinese coins, which were later used on the uh, round coins. But first they would have actually used them on the spade and the this, um, knife coins. So, but the round coins and the spade and knife coins come around around about the same time. They were pretty much competing with each other for popularity. And as you can see, a lot of these are corroded, which is pretty normal if they've left, been lost in the ground or in a tomb or some place like that, a religious temple or a city that's been burnt down. So these probably, apart from the ones that are made of calcium carbonate, these are probably the ones that actually last a long uh least in the ground the stone ones probably last the longest because it's just a natural environment for them then we've got these silver ones which are not too sure if they are authentic or if they're just modern counterfeits because silver would have been pretty much a bullion coin back then so it would have had something like a soy sea. anyway so that's the pretty much the actual coins of uh now there is not much information that i can actually glean from these uh we need we do have some information from the coins that come later so the shell and the is it the ant face and the ghost face coins which are going to do in the next video we have a little bit of more of a historical talking about why the actual inscriptions on them are the way they are. Anyway, thank you and have an awesome coin and banknote collecting time. Okay, just want to say, hoo-hoo.